first of all, I'd like to take an opportunity to say thank you very much to all of you for coming um, and for including us in this extraordinary event of, of philanthropic giving, which I'm hoping to take full advantage of. You, whilst I stand here this evening, there are nearly 5,000 women in prison. And of those 5,000 women that are released tomorrow, or next week, or next month, nearly 65% will be reconvicted within two years. That means that approximately 3,250 women that are in prison tonight, as we sit here, will be back there within two years of being released. And that is at huge cost. It's a huge cost to the state. It's a huge cost to you and I as taxpayers. But more importantly, it's a huge cost to each and every one of those women. It's a cost in terms of their families, the wider community, and of course, their children. And one of the greatest contributing factors to reoffending is the inability to find employment. And that's where we come in. I'm hoping technology will do its thing here. I think you've gone back to the beginning. Have I? <coughs> I definitely have pressed the button I was told yeah, to. Let's just see. Is this part of my six minutes? <laughs> <laughs> Karen, is Karen around? Karen! Perhaps you could help us, Karen. I pressed the button, Karen, it's not there working. I have such a good start. Deja vu, isn't it? We are around the whole thing all over again. <laughs> Every prison has a big prisoner shaped hole outside the gate, and so many ex prisoners fall into that hole and pop back up inside again. That's the first thing you worry about on your release is being put back into employment because you've got a criminal record and nobody wants to help you. Anything to do with business, I should just record it. If, if we want to inspire prisoners into new ways of working and inspire them to work positively in the economy and not come back into prison, then we need to allow them to be inspirational themselves. Managing a business, which is what many people do in the criminal community, requires a lot of skills, and those skills are transferable. Since I've been involved in my startup, the support and the encouragement that I know I've received from startup has inspired me, and it's kept me on the good path. Now that, Rosalind, I confess, I have a, a very large soft spot for her, and she is just one of the 110 women that we have supported into self-employment since we began the Startup Now for Women project that I'm asking all of you to support this evening. Rosalind won't mind me telling you that she has had over 20 convictions. Her first was at just 17 years old. But over the last two years since we've been supporting her at Startup, she's reconnected with her family, she's no longer on benefits, her self-esteem has rocketed, and she's on, a, on the good path that she, that she was talking about a moment ago. Ironically, as part of the way the startup works, Roslyn had to pitch her business in a Dragon's Den type event, not dissimilar to this evening. And I imagine she was equally nervous as she stood there in front of the panel, hoping that she would be chosen. A business advisor had helped her put a business plan together. So she'd had to think about what services she'd offer, what she'd charge, what the competition was, and a compelling reason why we should support her with the financial and business acumen that Startup has, as opposed to any of the other worthy applicants. Like tonight, in many respects, perhaps with the exception of the one important, and that, that is that her Dragon's Den took part in HMP Downview, which is significantly different to this glorious theatre in North Oxfordshire. <coughs> Excuse me. There is so much that I could tell you about the various women that we work with. Their successes, their challenges, their life stories, how we've supported them, the, the, the way that we work and what we do for them. But I have a fear of the Tibetan bowl for six minutes and being gonged out of existence. So I will just move on and say to you that happily, Rosalind is not 
unique. She's now two years into the programme, she's become a peer mentor, she's now helping other ex-offenders as they leave prison and they return to society. She is an extraordinary woman, but she is one of many extraordinary women. And she may go some way to explaining why we have a long waiting list of other women that like to be supported. It may go some way to explaining why we are now working in all of the prisons across the women's estate, including the closed ones. We're working with many, many partner agencies. So we're able to support women who have problems outside of our areas of expertise. And we work with agencies, and our offices are based in Oxfordshire, and we work with the Thames Valley Probation Services, amongst many other local agencies and services um, throughout the country. What I would like you to do is to think about how you can support women as remarkable as Rosalind. I promise you faithfully that not a penny that you pledge this evening will go on office costs, or admin, a postage stamp, or a telephone call. Each and every pound will go to support a woman who really needs it. You could be, you could be buying cake baking equipment for someone like Susan who makes the most extraordinary cupcakes. Or helping someone like Carleen with marketing material which she needed to help her cleaning services business stand out from all the others. Or perhaps someone like Jane who just wanted to attend a photo editing course. The reality is that any money you give tonight could be supporting one of the 5,000 women that are in prison as we sit here <coughs> and helping them beat the odds, not become one of the 65% that are reconvicted within two years of leaving prison, but who instead return to the communities, reconnect with their families, become a positive and contributing member of society. And in the age-old tradition of every good story, like Rosalind. Seven minutes. <laughs>